Okay, okay. Hear me out. So, I was going through old Sonic games, well, not original Sonic games, but games like Sonic Forces and Sonic 06, and I came to a realization. Something was very off-putting and familiar. Now, here it, here it is. Can you see that? Let me just enlarge now. Zoom in a little bit. Hold up. Infinite from Sonic Forces is Mephiles. This is the theory. Mephiles' grand and ultimate plan. So we start here with Solaris, original form. When people in the lab in Sonic 06 released Solaris, or should I say Mephiles and Ibilis, because Mephiles and Ibilis are Solaris split into two pieces. So here's what happened. Mephiles gained conscience and formulated a plan. He met with Shadow, and a few, a few years later, he transformed into the form you see right here, his infamous form. For Shadow's own shade. And then, much later on in the game, he joined, he joined together with Iblis. And what happened? He became corrupted version of Solaris. But that wasn't his master plan. It's much... His, his master plan is much greater. So, after getting defeated purposely, because you, you just can't beat multiversal plus being that easily, or anyhow at all, this happened. Some people thought that Mephiles was destroyed when the crystal, I mean, when the Scepter of Darkness got destroyed. But what actually happened is, Mephiles gained some of the powers of Solaris after splitting again. And he just vanished himself into separate timelines and split into two pieces. The first piece, the Chaos Ruby. I mean, not the Chaos Ruby, but the Phantom Ruby, yeah. And here it is, the original Phantom Ruby. And it's split from the Mephiles' disembodied form, which is now Time Eater. You, you can't deny similarities between them. So let's start with the Time Ruby. I mean, not the Time Ruby, but Phantom Ruby, yeah, Phantom Ruby. Second portion of Mephiles is a top crystal, or Scepter of Darkness, and it contains Mephiles' personality. Top crystal lands in an alternate timeline where it becomes Phantom Ruby that controls reality. Sorry for my spelling here, but mainly spatial aspect. And later on, Phantom Ruby gets picked up by this guy, whoever he is, and becomes infinite. So Phantom Ruby gets picked up by egomaniac, hunger for power, Mephiles personality and desires are now embedded into whoever possesses the Phantom Ruby and that's this guy Infinite and right here it, there is explanation Mephiles mocked Shadow for having finite power but what Mephiles really, really intended was his desire for obtaining the infinite power he wasn't truly omnipotent so 
and that's why he wanted to become Solaris again. But he knew it wouldn't be enough for him, so, so here we are. He wanted an infinite power, so he absorbed some of the Solaris's power, powers. And right here, we have similarities between Infinite and Mephiles. Eyes are very similar, their personalities are also similar, and their, their, their plans quite similar, and their craving their cravings for destruction are also quite dissimilar. So now we go back to Time Eater. And yet again, the Phantom Ruby. You see this, you see this black portion of the Chaos Ruby? Well, I theorized that it could be the mind of Mephiles, or at least that part of him. And speaking of Time Eater, again, he is the first portion of Mephiles. Hold up. And here is the fun part. What would happen if someone like Time Eater obtained the Phantom Ruby? Well, what would happen is Mephiles would return again, even though that he returned in form of infinite, but this is much grander. So hear me out. Somehow, in an and maybe an alternate timeline. Time Eater somehow and somehow obtains the Phantom Ruby. The Phantom Ruby absorbs Time Eater, releasing Mephiles in his truly omnipotent form, and then Mephiles in his unstoppable new form. <clears throat> rules over other timelines or destroys them. So that was my theory. Mephiles grand master plan in becoming truly omnipotent. And that will be it.